Hey everybody, what is up? This is Meyer, and in this video, uh, I wanted to go over kick and bass stuff. Uh, a couple of you guys were asking about how do we do the kick and the bass when using three sixteenth notes for the bass, and I think it makes sense if I just do this to have your kick and your sub together, and then your mid bass is playing what would be your sixteenth notes. So really, when it comes to uplifting at 138 or 140 beats per minute, in my opinion, you pretty much have two options for your sub. I mean, you can, you can get creative with it, but for most of the time, 95% of the time, you're either doing offbeat or double 16th notes. So let me show you what I mean. Let me go ahead and open up Silent, and we'll go ahead and make a sub bass patch really quick. I'm just going to initialize it. Call this sub. Make it blue. Give it a bass color. Uh, icon, route it to the mixer along with the kick. Uh, once again, you can do this with any digital audio workstation. I'm using FL because I think I'm a little bit quicker with it and I know the keyboard shortcuts very well. So I'm going to turn this down to two octaves and I'm going to turn on the filter, add a sine wave that's also two octaves lower. A little click can help with this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an LFO tool. Well, actually, before I do that, I want to make a kick and bass buzz. And a lot of guys are doing this. You don't necessarily have to, but I know James Diamond, Alan Morrow, a lot of these people are doing a kick and bass buzz. I think Reorder does it too. And it just kind of helps doing your processing. So what I'm going to put on here is an LFO tool just so we can look at the waveform and actually maybe rather than doing that I'll put the mega scope on here just because it's pretty pretty easy to use oh, and I can't find it because I updated it well we'll just use LFO tool today um, so your options for the sub so let's say your kick is on every beat like this in my opinion your options for your sub are either an offbeat sub like this or double 16th notes like this and you sometimes want to give them a little bit of space so you can hear it now obviously these aren't mixed very well Now, some people were asking if you were to do this, and this is where I think things get muddy, because if you notice, the low end of this is interfering with the low end of your kick. Now, what I tend to do is, and let me go ahead and make this detached, which it is. I'm gonna put an LFO tool on each of these so we can take a look at what's going on here. So this is like the sub bass oscilloscope just turn this down. I should just save this as like a preset, like the oscilloscope preset. So this is the sub and this is what the kick looks like. That's what I'm not. So if you notice, there is some overlap with the tail of the kick. Now, I actually think some of that overlap sounds good. Um, but you can see here, I can go in and just any way you want to shorten the sample, basically. Whereas if you were to use three sixteenth notes, let's go ahead and so let me put these over here. So once again, on top, this is kick and bass. This is the sub and this is just the kick. If you were to go ahead and do three sixteenth notes, I think things get messy. So what I prefer to do is if you want that, that, that 3 16th note sound, use a double offbeat or use a double 16th note and let your mid bass do those, do, um, do the 3 16th notes. So I can go here and get serum maybe. And I'm just going to grab maybe my favorite, one of my favorite, uh, Oh wait, that's a that's a lead. <laughs> Let's see. 
one of my favorite mid bass sounds. Route it. Oh, I didn't get the color right. That's okay. And pencil this in. And one thing is, yeah, this is just too high. And what I may still do is, oh my gosh, it is being so slow. And then what I'll do here on this mid bass channel is if I put an LFO tool, we can just kind of take out this stuff. So notice how this gives it that driving 16th note feel, even though the sub and everything in the low end is only playing these lower notes. So this is once again the kick and bass bus. And this is showing the low end of the kick, the double 16th sub bass, and but the three 16th notes from the actual mid bass. So that's how I would do it. Now, if you're really, really adamant about making a triple 16th note sub, let me turn this off, and I was to put this back. Um, one option you have is actually using the LFO tool, but to side chain out the low end. So let me show you what I mean by this. So let me go ahead and add an LFO tool here to the sub bass. And if you notice here what we have, and let me show this with the LFO tool on the kick and bass. Now right now it's actually not interfering too bad, but it is interfering a little bit. What I think the best option to do is have this kind of curve where you're normally side chaining it and side chain the heck out of it. And use this, uh, this, this basically this frequency cut um, at the frequency that you don't want your sub bass interfering. So take a look, because what I can do here is what this is going to do is cut out the low end when that kick is playing, the low end of the sub, but the high end is still gonna be allowed to be there. So you're still getting the upper, the upper range of the sub bass but it's taking out the low end that would be interfering with the kick because what's going on with the kick, of course, is it's basically a swept sine wave. So if I was to put a spectrum analyzer here, you can see when I'm in high resolution mode, you can see it's basically a sine wave. So when the sub comes in, it's lowering the volume of that sub bass when the kick's low end is playing which helps a lot. And I think this is a good method if you're doing like a side trance style bass to um, basically to getting that, that, that sound because then when the kick is playing, if your kick is playing more than one 16th note, you're going to have an issue with the low end. And, and actually I think that's when it's, it's actually really easy to see when you start using audio. So let me go ahead into my trance samples and grab what would be a like a side trance kick. That's a good one. A 
Let me route this to the kick really quick. That's channel two. And let's go ahead and grab a Psytrance bass. So, so what I want to do is get uh, tonal shots, bass shots, side bass shots. Uh, Reorder sample pack has some really good ones. So we are working in A. That's good. Whoops. So then is what we can do is shorten this and make sure that the snap is on, which I don't know why it's not snapping to. So notice the kick plays and then you have your 3 16th notes. And what I'm going to do if the mixer wants to behave is route that to channel three. So notice when I turn this off, you don't hear the high end of it, like a 16th, like a true 16th note. But here, when you do it this way, you take the low end out of this, but you still have the high end, the sort of clicky part, but the low end isn't playing or isn't interfering with the, the two together. So I think that's kind of a, a unique way. Now, what most people do, and this is what the trick that I learned from Reorder, is they actually, who made the sample pack, all these samples, um, it, what makes sense is actually, if you make this an audio track, let's say I make these both audio tracks, you process your first 16th note separate. So rather than having to side chain it, what you can do, and insert 10. Ah, I see what I need to do. Okay. And these guys gotta go to 10. And that also means the nice thing about that is you can EQ it separately too. So let's say you want to take the low end out. This is just the first 16th, say first 16th. And this is the like next two 16ths. This kick probably doesn't have enough high end. Which is pretty much what we're doing with that LFO tool, except we're not automating the volume of it. But I do think this way is probably the most precise, where you take your mid bass, or, and you, you don't necessarily have to have your sub on separate channels, but if you are using 3 16ths like this, and a kick that's long, which usually is gonna take up two sixteenths, if not more, especially if you're doing uplifting where you have some of these longer kicks, it makes sense to process it this way. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.